All right, so the last thing we need to review before getting into the meat of this course is the Nashville number system. If this is the first time you're ever hearing of it, pay close attention. Learning this system will enable you to transpose songs easily and give you a newfound understanding of the chords and the scales and their relationships to one another, as well as to enhance your ability to play by ear. If you're well versed in the Nashville numbers already, especially in the keys of C and G, you can skip this section. Let's take the C scale for example as it's the easiest to visualize. So we already know that the C chord comes from the C scale, one, three, five. But what if we built chords on the other tones in the scale? So in the C scale, there's the first tone and we built it with thirds. If we go up to the next tone in the C scale, which is D, we're gonna come up with a D minor chord because we're building it with a third and another third on top of it. We could keep going, E, F, G, A minor, and that would be B diminished. Since the key of C only has white notes, all the chords we pull from it will also have only the white notes. This changes if we're in any other key. So let's go to the key of G where we have one sharp. So the first two chords in G are easy. They're G major, A minor. Right, but once we get to B, we're gonna have to engage that F sharp that's part of the G scale. This gives us B minor. So then we go up again, here's C, and then we're gonna go to the D, and now that's D major, because again, we're having to use F sharp instead of F natural, right? Then E minor, then F sharp diminished, and then we'd be back to G major. All right, so now let's get to the numbers part of the Nashville number system. So back to the key of C. Let's number these chords one through seven. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in the key of C, C is said to be the one chord. D minor is the two, E minor is the three, four, five, six, seven, all right? We're gonna use Roman numerals to identify these seven chords. And you're gonna notice that some of them are lowercase and some of them are uppercase. Uppercase means it's a major chord, lowercase means it's a minor chord. And the seven chord is lowercase with a little circle, that means that it's diminished. If you're not familiar with diminished chords, you're just gonna flat the third and the fifth of the chord. And that's a diminished chord. All right, so we can apply these numbers to any major key. So let's go back to the key of G. So G would be one, A minor would be two, B minor would be three, C four, D five, E minor is six, F sharp diminished is seven. You may notice that the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are all major. This is true in all the major keys. In the key of C, these chords are C, F, and G. And in the key of G, the chords are G, C, and D. Likewise, the two, the three, and the six chords are all minor. And the seventh chord is diminished. And this is true in every major key. So in the key of G, the two is A minor, and the three is B minor, and the six is E minor. Understanding that major keys and chord transitions behave in the same way in every key is really important and gives us a whole world of options. All right, for instance, when you play a C chord and you wanna to go to the closest F chord, so here's C and you wanna to go to the closest F, you're gonna take the third and the fifth and you're gonna move them both up in the scale and that'll give you the second inversion of the F chord. With me so far? So this movement works the same in every key. So if I'm in the key of G, and I wanna to go to the four chord in the G, I just take the third and the fifth and I'm gonna move them up. And that gives me the C chord, which is the four in G, right? If I go to the key of D, D is the one chord, and G is the four chord, and the movement is still the same. I'm gonna take my third and move it up, take my fifth and move it up. 
So just like in C, C to F, I'm just moving third and fifth up. G to C, moving third and fifth up. D to G, moving third and fifth up. In the key of A, A has a C sharp and an F sharp and a G sharp. So the movement is the same here, except when I move up, if I'm moving up in chord tones, then I have to hit that F sharp. But do you see what I'm saying? The movement is the same in every key. So here, movement is the same. This is a one to four. One to four. So this is one of the reasons that we want to study the Nashville numbers, because understanding the, the chords and scales relatively using the number system gives us rules that we can put down that would apply to every key. Having a system of numbers to describe the chords also gives us the ability to describe chord progressions in numbers. So instead of specifically having to be like a C to A minor to F to G, we'd say it's a one, six, four, five progression. And then if we wanted to put it into the key of G and we know what those chords are, we can easily play G, E minor, C, D, because it's still a one, six, four, five. Finally, understanding the number system allows you to identify chord progressions by ear much more easily. Until I learned this system roughly, I don't know, four years into my piano training, I thought I didn't have a very good ear. But after I learned this system, I was able to train my ear over time. Most of us don't have perfect pitch. Meaning, if I were to play a note and you had no context and you didn't know what key we were in and you didn't see me play the note, you probably couldn't name it off the top of your head. So if I just play a note, If you can identify that note just by hearing it, then you have perfect pitch. But if you're like most of us, you might not have known that that was an A flat. Most of us have relative pitch, meaning I can play this note and then a note above it. And I can learn what the distance between these two notes sounds like. For instance, if you know this is a fourth, like let's say F sharp to B, then you can hear a fourth anywhere else. With time and practice, this will allow you to identify a chord progression without double checking it on the piano. You may hear a song and be able to identify that it's a 1, 6, 4, 5 progression and figure out the key when you do get to a keyboard. Throughout the rest of this course, I'll be using the Nashville number system when talking about chords or relationships between chords. So for example, I might say this is a 1, 4 relationship, which you often hear in gospel music. Or I might show you how if you go from like a 1 to a 6 chord, you can play a 1 chord here, and then a 6 chord, you just move your thumb up, and now you're on the 6. That's the difference between 1 and 6, depending on the inversion you're in. So I'm going to use the numbers as a regular language in this course. So that brings us to the end of the review on Nashville Number System. So now we're going to dive into the meat of the course, beginning with lead sheets.